Well, it's winter time and some of our potatoes are already sprouting. These have been out of the ground for about three or four months and one of the challenges of not having a root cellar is if you don't store your potatoes properly, they're going to sprout. So in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about ideal storage conditions to prevent this from happening. I'm gonna show you one of the things that we're doing to try to store our potatoes since we don't have a root cellar that I think is gonna make a big difference. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with these that have already sprouted so that we don't let them go to waste. Today's also our 12th day of Guten Gardening, gardening gift giving, so stay tuned for that at some point in this video. Now in an ideal world, we would have some kind of root cellar type setup at our house in order to store our potatoes and our other root crops. Now a root cellar is going to keep the temperature somewhere between 30 and 40 degrees and a pretty high humidity, often between 80 and 90 percent. What we need for potatoes for long-term storage is going to be that 40 degrees, not usually colder than 40 degrees, and about 80 to 90% humidity. That's gonna give us the best chance to have a long life for these potatoes. But we can't really create or recreate that setting anywhere in our house. Our garage isn't heated, and so the temperatures right now, it's about minus six degrees Fahrenheit outside. And in our garage, even with a heater, it's about 19 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's way too cold. And in our basement, we get about 60 degrees Fahrenheit pretty consistently, and that's a little bit too warm. So when we're storing potatoes, normally we have them in the darkest area of our basement. We try to keep everything as cool as possible, but after three months or so, we're still gonna see some sprouting happening. And since we can't keep our potatoes in those optimal settings in the open here in our house, one of the things we've done is used our free buckets to create a storage device. Now, unfortunately, I didn't record the assembly of this, but I can dig down in here just a little bit and show you. What we have is just some all natural sand, so it's not bleached sand, and it was a little bit damp when we put it in here. And we have our purple magic molly potatoes buried in here just underneath the sand. So using our free buckets, hashtag save this bucket, we put about an inch and a half, maybe two inches of sand along the bottom. And that's where we created our first layer of our potatoes. And then we made sure that they didn't touch. We don't want our root crops touching each other when they're in storage here. And then once we layered our first layer of potatoes, we added another inch or so of sand just to make sure they were covered fully. And we put our second layer, we added sand, we put our next layer all the way up to the top. So this bucket is filled with sand. The total cost for this, a full bag of sand, and this only used a little over a half a bag of sand, full bag of sand right now is about $4 where I live. Now in terms of storing these potatoes in the sand bucket, after we've already loaded everything in, we took them and we put them in the darkest and the coolest part of our basement still with the lid off. Now $4 is a decent amount of money to put into one bucket, but the sand is reusable. And so this is something that once we have it set up and as we're using the potatoes throughout the season, we'll be able to use again next season. And the bucket, as I mentioned, was free. Well, what does this do? The sand actually helps to moderate the humidity level around the potatoes, and it's going to help increase the life of our potatoes pre-sprouting for up to a couple more months. When the humidity level is too low, the moisture starts to come out of the potatoes and they start to get that kind of spongy feeling to it and wrinkle up. So that's one of the reasons why you want to make sure that you're maintaining a pretty steady level of humidity. Additionally, you don't want to put your potatoes in an area that's too cold, like below 40 degrees, because I've read what happens there is that then the starch starts to transform into sugar and you get a really sweet regular potato. But I've also read that if you just take them out and put them in the room temperature, that it kind of goes back to that original taste after a while. Now again, we're gonna be eating these throughout the season, but some of them we're gonna be able to get in here and plant again because we'll have delayed the chitting process. We'll be able to plant these when we're ready. And one article I read indicated you could get up to about five extra months of life out of your potatoes using this simple method. So this is something that if you have a potato harvest, I would recommend you potentially give a try. Now, when you store potatoes properly, you could be looking at five to 10 months of storage time versus the two to three months before sprouting that you would get if you're not protecting them appropriately. Now, some of you probably already have some potatoes that are sprouting like we do. 
So I'm going to show you something that we're doing with our sprouted potatoes that are going to enable us to still get another harvest out of them and are going to help us maintain them for a little bit longer until we're ready for them. I'm going to use this purple Viking potato as an example of what we're going to do to try to prevent any loss from these potatoes. I tell you what, the purple Viking performed pretty well for us this year. And one of the things that we did earlier in the season was to take some of our magic molly potatoes. And here's an example of our purple magic molly potato. You can see it's just now starting to sprout as well. But we took some of these and we planted them and created potato seedlings. Now here's some footage of what those potato seedlings look like. And it was really nice because that gave us an extra 30, maybe 35 days that they were growing in those containers before we transplanted them into our grow bags. And we got a pretty decent fall harvest. And so that's what we're going to try to replicate now with these potatoes. We're gonna go ahead and get these planted in containers because I wanna take advantage of these while they're nice and healthy before they get old. I mean, this could produce something for us even indoors. And so that's what we're gonna do. Now I'm gonna be using the same size pot that I used for our Magic Mollies. It's about a four inch square at the top and it's about five inches tall. Now one of the reasons why we would use something smaller like this than say go right into our bucket is because this uses a whole lot less mix. And once we've got this planted in here and it starts to sprout, we'll be able to see just how healthy the plant is going to be. And then we can pick the best ones to then transplant later into our containers indoors, whether that be our buckets or grow bags or what have you. So it makes sense to get them started as seedlings. I mean, there's a reason why we don't direct sow every single vegetable. I mean, we usually plant the seed potato directly in the ground, but this is a way to get an advance notice of the quality of the plant that you're trying to grow. Now let's take a look at the mix that I'm using. This is just a mixture of mostly peat moss, a little bit of our cocoa cure, and then our perlite. This is a really thin, really, really light mix. And what I want to do is have about three quarters of an inch of our mix added to the bottom here. You can see that's about what we have in here. That gives us room to put our seed potato right down in here, and then as much room as possible to fill up with this mix to allow for the sprouting. All right, I'm gonna interrupt this video very briefly for our 12th giveaway in our 31 days of Guten Gardening, gardening gift giving. All right, folks, lots of people entered into the 12th giveaway. Now listen, if you wanna be entered into the next giveaway, all you have to do is leave a comment on this video or one of our community posts between now and the next video. And if you're located outside the United States, please let us know in the comment. Today's prize is one of the most useful tools you can get in seed storage. I know it says it's a photo box storage container, but this works so well for storing your seeds. We've bought two of them, and now our winner today is going to get one shipped directly to them. Well, I hope you agree that that's another great prize. Let's go ahead and see who our day 12 winner is. Boy, I'm so excited. We've still got 19 more to go. Our winner today is Nikki. Congratulations, Nikki. We really appreciate you being a part of our community. Listen, leave a congratulations in the comment for today's winner, but don't say her name so that she can be surprised when she watches this video and finds out it's her. And Nikki, when you see that you've won, leave a comment on this video and we'll be in touch with you to get that prize shipped out right away. And you know what, because it's the day before Christmas, we're gonna do a second giveaway and this one is going to be for one of our t-shirts. Now, if you're looking for the perfect gift around Christmas time, check out our store, just go to our main page, click on store, and you can see some of the really cool t-shirts, bears, and even aprons and hats that we have available. So if you're looking for something to buy for the Guten Gardener in your life, this might be something that works perfectly for you. All right, let's go ahead and see who our t-shirt winner is gonna be. Dave Hendricks, I added your name to this giveaway because you commented just as I was recording it. So here we go, let's see who our bonus t-shirt giveaway winner is going to be. Looks like it's going to be Heidi S. Congratulations, Heidi, that t-shirt's coming your way. Give congratulations in the comment again for our newest winner. And Heidi, when you see this video, make sure you leave a comment and we'll get that shirt sent out to you as quickly as possible. All right, back to our video. 
All right, I've already created a premix here. This has our bone meal, Lambionite, and a little bit of our Mycos mycorrhizal, and then that all-purpose fertilizer. And I'm gonna add this along with a little bit of azomite just right underneath where I'm gonna be planting. So I don't need to put too much in there. This mix has already been fertilized. I'll just cover it up just a little bit. And I'm gonna take one of our purple Vikings, and you see the direction that these are already sprouting up. I'm actually gonna put those facing up just like so. And then I'm gonna take my pre-prepped mix and go ahead and place it right on top. And I'm gonna fill this up to about a half inch below the surface. Again, giving as much of this mix as possible. And also keep in mind that when I water this, it's gonna sink just a little bit, but that's what one of ours is gonna look like. Now you can see I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch of these. So one of the keys to our success here is making sure we label the different potatoes that we're putting in here so we can keep track of which ones are which. That's simple enough, isn't it? So a little purple Viking there. I'm gonna go ahead and fill the rest of these up. I'm gonna show you one more thing first. These are some of our Yukon Golds that we harvested. And if you look closely, you can see that there's actually a good bit of green, a good bit of solanine damage on these. And that's not really something we wanna consume, but these make great candidates for creating your own seed potatoes. And so these haven't sprouted yet, but when they do sprout, these will become more seed potatoes for us rather than potatoes that we're eating. All right, as I'm potting up this Magic Molly, one thing I do want to point out, though, is that we've never really had as productive results growing indoors as outdoors. And so definitely if you can preserve your potatoes, that's probably more ideal. But at the same time, none of this is going to go to waste because of what we're doing right now. Check out this red potato. Doesn't that look like a crab? <laughs> I always think they look kind of spider-like or crab-like anytime I see these with sprouts on both sides. All right, I'm gonna get this one planted too. And what I'm gonna do to water these is I'm actually gonna water underneath and let it soak up, let it absorb up rather than trying to water at the top. That'll help to prevent any kind of mold or anything building up on the surface and also keep our fungus gnats at bay. Well, folks, if any of you have any experience with a root cellar, we'd love to hear about it or a creative way of building a root cellar. We'd love to know more. It's something that we're interested in, but again, it's a little bit challenging where we are. So I'd love to hear about your experiences with it. But if you're like us and don't have any access to a root cellar currently, maybe potting up your potatoes that are sprouting or using the sand method might be something that helps you out in preserving your harvest. We'd love to know what your thoughts are. Congratulations once again to our 12th winner in our 31 days of giving. We hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video and found it informative, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.